there's a horde spy. Who are the suspects? Everyone. How are you doing that? I practice at home. <sighs> I didn't grow up with the original She-Ra, but, uh, you know, I, like, developed a love for it as an adult. Um, and so that was something that, you know, I think um, when I was watching the original 80s show, I was, my mind was kind of blown. I remember I reached the final shot of the original opening title for She-Ra, and it has all of the princesses like lined up on this cliff and and Bo, like the princesses and Bo, and he's got like a crop top and a red heart on his chest and there's a rainbow overhead. And that's their like title card of the show. We sort of pay homage to it in our title card. And I was like, this is amazing. The fact that they made this in the 80s and like it's honestly so gay um, and it features an almost entirely female cast and like it's got unicorns and princesses and also like, evil villain cyborg like bad guys like i i mean you don't find properties like that even today um so it was really exciting it was just like okay well like i know that all the people working on that show back in the 80s there was stuff they wanted to do with this show that they probably couldn't do at the time um what like, what can I do now that they would have wanted to do at the time? And so that was a lot of it. It was just like, let's take what they set up for us, this like incredible, just like gold mine of uh, character and story and world building. And like, let's just take it all to its logical conclusion. Um, emotionally, lore wise, just let's see how far we can take this. All I did was pick up the sword and then push, I'm in a tiara. We can't trust her. Your army is called the evil horde. Who calls us that? Everybody. I think the two things that um, were at the forefront of my approach to the series uh, when it came to elaborating on the original show was one, it was diversity of character, um, making sure we were representing a variety of characters in as many ways as possible in a way that reflects our real world. Um, and then also, I think, depth of character as well. And this very, like, I think audiences are gravitating more towards these kind of very character-driven, almost, um, uh, you know, exploring the characters' inner lives, their inner feelings. Uh, and I think, like, my approach to that was just to kind of take the character as they existed in the original show and just ask questions about why they were doing what they were doing, why they were on the side that they were on, how their relationships with other characters played out, and just in as many ways as possible, flesh that out. Adora is different from us. Do you think just anyone could bring a dying woman back to life? Not quite the reunion you pictured, is it? Part of the idea from the start, especially because this is a legacy nostalgia property, you want it to have a broader appeal as well. I think we've seen um, a huge increase in kind of like online cartoon fandom as well, which tends to be teens to young adults. Uh, so you have the young kids, you have teens to young adults who might not have an attachment to the original property. And then kind of like millennials and older millennials who would have grown up with the original and have a more nostalgic connection. We really wanted to tell stories that were always appropriate for young audiences, but still, um, asked hard questions and didn't qu didn't shy away from dark themes or like hard questions things like that things that like you know we could we we weren't talking down to kids we were respecting the intelligence of young people and also giving plot lines that maybe maybe they're they can't fully appreciate yet before they've gained you know more experience but like their parents might be able to appreciate the uh you know something that is a little bit more adult, but making sure that it is always, uh, first and foremost, you know, aimed at kids. You said you've been watching me since I was an infant, so you must know what I really am, where I came from. Answer me! It is true, you are not of Etheria. I see kids of today and I'm like, oh my God, you are so much smarter than I was when I was your age. They are so much savvier. They are so, like, way more clued in on what's going on in the world than I ever was at that age. I wanted it to feel like these characters that they were just a natural part of this world. And to see them in the story, you're just like, oh, of course, yeah, 
That makes sense. Uh, it makes sense that Bo has two dads. It makes sense that Double Trouble has a fluid gender identity. Like all of these things fit in this world. They go with the story. Um, and then hopefully, you know, if those kids are sort of questioning their own identity, that will help them sort of figure things out. And if they're not, you know, then th when they make friends or meet people in real life, that, you know, it won't be, you know, they'll have a little bit of a, a foundation for that, you know, they'll kind of already understand it. And the original show, like kind of famously, um, the characters all uh, were pretty much the same mold. So there's kind of like a classic male body, a classic female body, and then uh, they're just painted different colors or things were added to them depending on what they needed. Um, so we, I, I felt really strongly that, you know, we could really push what a heroic body type looked like. And I really wanted these characters to be as distinct from each other as possible. You get a sense for what their personality is by looking at them and they all feel really, really distinct from each other, which we have the, you know, opportunity to be able to do. And working with Mattel now, who like has been pushing their like body types on their dolls, experimenting with more um, just body diversity. Um, and that's been really exciting. You, obviously, comic artist, Eisner winner, you were writing on TV, but, like, this is your first showrunner mm -hmm. job. Like, what have you had to learn that you maybe didn't expect? My jobs before had always been writing, characterization, coming up with ideas, and that was, I was nervous enough about that part for this job, but I think the steepest learning curve for me was that that wasn't actually my whole job. I had to be a manager and I had to be a leader and I had to be someone who um, compromised and mediated and all of these things that I had never learned how to do and I was very uncomfortable doing at first. So there's a lot of that kind of in Adora's story as well because she's kind of like me. She just wants to like punch things and hope that solves her problem. And then it's like, wait, I have to like mediate? I have to like, be inspirational and like bring everyone together. I don't know how to do that. Am I inspirational? <laughs> ah. It's hard to get your brain to turn off sometimes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I always want to like make sure that I, um, I'm doing my own projects outside of work, but sometimes, sometimes all you want to do is just go home and like lie on the couch and just like pet a cat. <laughs> cool. The sword has chosen you. The time has come for your destiny. We work with an overseas studio in Korea, um, any for you. So it's uh, definitely they're like our partners in this. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, they're a hand drawn studio. So every single you know episode that you see, every single frame is drawn by hand by someone, which is ridiculous. Like they, they send us some of our favorite um, drawings at the end of each season, and we have boxes of them, like rooms full of these boxes of them. We have our timers who break down every single drawing of the character and just decide when they move their hand or blink. Like it is an incredibly complicated process that I've like grown to appreciate so much every single person who does these jobs in animation because it is like, like, it is a work of passion. Come on, let's go home already. I'm not going home. The Horde is evil. They've been lying to us. You have to help me. What happened to you? I'm sorry, Ketra. She's just like every other princess. All sparkle, no substance. My parents were kind of anti... Not just anti-animation, kind of anti-TV and movies, I think. I grew up pretty fundamentalist Christian. Um, but one thing we watched together all the time was The Prince of Egypt, because it had God in it. Um, but I loved it, and I still do. It's one of my favorite movies. And it's just like, we would watch that all the time. I can sing all the songs from memory. Um, yeah, other than that, we didn't. We weren't really supposed to watch like kids' cartoons. Uh, and when I was growing up, they were like the edgy kids cartoons, like Courage the Cowardly Dog and Ed, Ed and Eddie. And my parents were like, no, it's clearly devil worship. None of that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Veggie Tales. Yeah, I watch a lot of Scooby-Doo for some reason. Oh, Veggie Tales, yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. You each have a skill that only you can do. The Horde almost destroyed my home. I want to help fight them. Plus, your friend over there can turn into a like eight foot tall lady with a sword and I want her on my side. Yeah! Yeah! I think on this show we wanted the character relationships. You know, I didn't want it to just be about shipping. I wanted it to seem like if there was a relationship that people were really passionate about, there's like 
there was actually a version of events where like maybe it would really happen because yeah. all of these relationships like you know are normal in their own way i think a lot of times it's been treated as something that like only weird girls on the internet do when it's like why why shouldn't these stories be kind of front and center especially when it comes to representation of kind of like queer couples like i just always want to make sure that it feels like this is something that can really happen here it's not ridiculous these characters like really care about each other and like th like these relationships are really happening so yeah i mean i think that that's something that um, I love just, you know, seeing all of the fan creations and uh, people latching on to like minor characters and just putting so much into that. Like, that's the kind of fan I was. I was always like, that character has five minutes of screen time. They're my favorite. I'm going to like write a bunch of stories about them. Um, so it's awesome seeing that side of things. Looks like there's no avoiding a fight now, princess. <laughs> Princesses of Power.